Universe of the Owls of 1973, Big Al Conover and his comeback plan. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane of that amazing season with the Fighting Owls. It was the second year for Big Al as head coach of the famous university of high academic standing and charter member of the Southwest Conference. And what a challenging season it was. The experts said, with a fierce schedule including five teams that would live up to predictions to make the nation's top 20 and play in major bowl games, the Bryce was destined for the league seller. It was a tough start against mighty foes, but the comeback Owls won their last four in a row after adversity. Conover was named Southwest Conference Coach of the Year by a couple of major selectors. The amazing Owls clawed their way to third place in the league, five notches higher than predicted. It was a super effort. And let's start a review of just a few of the many big plays of a spectacular year. It began with new Southwest Conference member and Crosstown Bowl University of Houston in the famous Astrodome, with the Owls the visiting team, though actually the dome is closer to Rice than the UH campus. And the crowd flocks in for another big Owl and Cougar season open. The season began with this Rice kickoff by Alan Pringle. And promising our freshman Mark Bacalo from New York makes his varsity debut with this tackle. Fred Geisler was quarterback in the opener, and the Floridian hands off to Gary Ferguson on this fine run and an opening owl scoring drive. Rice scored first as Pringle made good on this 22-yard field goal. First of 11 of the season for the English citizen and our place kick specialist. Now we see one of those Conover specials. A tricky reverse wide run by Carl Swerf. And number 29 blazes for 37 yards on this fancy gout to the Cougar 11. Here's an unusual shot from high in the dome of Bruce Henley making a fine interception in the end zone to stop a cougar threat just before the half. It was a Rice school record 15th interception of his career for all-conference returnee Henley. Number 44, sophomore John Coleman of Los Angeles makes a fine run for Rice on this third quarter play. He breaks tackles and dashes 33 yards to set up a go-ahead field goal. A freshman in his first varsity game, we see Tommy Kramer of San Antonio hit Abel Owl receiver Ed Lofton on his 53-yard pass and run play in final quarter action. But UH won this one 24-6 with an edge in experience and depth. And the Owls will challenge the Blue Bonnet Bowl Club in the 1974 opener, hoping for revenge in September in their own Rice Stadium. The Owls struck early in their home opener the following Saturday at Rice Stadium against the University of Montana. Senior in Larry Medford of Clear Creek picked off this early Grizzly pass and returned it to the Montana 25 to set up a score. Geisler moved the Owls closer soon after the intercept on this pass to Lofton for 17 yards. A couple plays later, that tough little runner from Uvalde, Gary Ferguson, took a pitch out and behind a key block by second team all-conference tackle Sammy Johnson, darted in for the score. Gets set now for one of the finest plays of the year. One of several dazzling Rice kickoff returns. This one by freshman James Sykes of Cold Spring opening the second half. He whizzed through Grizzlies for a 99-yard return, longest in Rice history, to give the Owls a 13-3 lead. A final Rice score came on these two tough runs by fullback Coleman. First, we see John drive behind his offensive line for a rugged four yards to the one. And then Coleman dives over for the score, and the Owls win one for the home fans at Rice Stadium, 21-3 over Montana. Over 66,000 fans saw Rice and Bay Baton Rouge to play ever-strong annual intersectional foe LSU at Tiger Stadium. And Pringle boomed the kickoff deep for a touchback to start the game. In early action of the LSU game, John Coleman made this good effort to gain 11 yards against the sturdy Tiger defense. 
One the fans will see Rice challenge again at Big Rice Stadium at Houston in 1974. Geisler did a neat bit of scrambling on this pass play to get a toss away to Gary Ferguson coming out of the backfield for the 16-yard gain for Rice. Here's another nifty owl completion. This time, Geisler hits Eddie Lofton, destined to be the second high receiver in the conference as a sophomore. Rice took an early lead over the top 10 ranked and heavily favored Bengals on this 36-yard field goal by Allen Pringles for a first quarter 3 to nothing lead. After the Tigers made a tying field goal, this kickoff in the second period went to freshman James Sykes. And watch him somehow spin out of trouble and go flying downfield. A fantastic 96-yard return just a week after his 99-yarder against Montana. But Sykes is stopped just short of the goal. Now watch closely. Coleman tries for a touchdown, but there's a stack up. A touchdown signal by an official, but it was not allowed. And the Owls have to settle for a field goal try after a delay of game penalty. The kick is good by Pringle for a rise 6-3 lead. But LSU came on with their depth in the second half to pull it out finally 24-9 after a fine effort by the underdog Owls. Rice hosted mighty Notre Dame before 50,000 on a rainy night and made a game effort. Here Bruce Henley recovers a fumble to stop an early drive by the Fighting Irish at the Owl 31. Cornelius Walker also was alert for a Rice fumble recovery against Notre Dame. The big guy from Austin drew strong plays from Notre Dame players and newsmen for his defensive play in this tough game. Here the Husky Cornelius combines with fellow returning star defender Jody Medford to drop Irish quarterback Clements for a big loss. And sophomore Mike Landrum started getting attention for his great punting in this game against the unbeaten Irish with this nifty 54-yard boot, well covered by the Owls specialty unit as Gary Cox makes the tackle. But Notre Dame just had too many big guns en route to a perfect record season and Sugar Bowl bit. So Big Al congratulates Eric Parsegan at the finish and looks to a return game at famous South Bend, Indiana, when the Owls tried to upset Notre Dame there in 1974. Rice hosts Southern Methodist University in the Owl homecoming game, and Gary Ferguson darts 14 yards on the scintillating run in early action on the Rice AstroTurf. Freshman Tommy Kramer has moved in as starting quarterback. We see him hit a nifty 23-yard pass to Eddie Lofton in second quarter action of the conference opener for both teams. This play moved Rice to take the lead as Kramer hits a surprise starter at tight end, freshman Danny Johnson, number 91, on a 17-yard pass play to the SMU 34-yard line to set up a go-ahead field goal. And here it is, a 45-yard attempt by Pringle with Kramer holding. Rice moved to a 9-7 lead over the Mustangs in the third quarter. Here's a terrific owl pass play that gives Rice a third quarter lead. Kramer throws long and deep. Carl Swerk makes a fine move and catch on a 36-yard scoring play that puts Rice in front of SMU 16-14. But the Mustangs from Dallas came on in the last quarter to pull out a 27-16 victory. Over 62,000 fans saw the Owls get off to a good start against defending champion Texas at Austin. Freshman Kramer completed this 17-yard pass well into Longhorn land in an early play. A couple plays later, rookie Kramer shows poise, scrambling out of the pocket to hit Carl Swerk for a big gain to the UT 15-yard line. And then Kramer found Eddie Lofton in the end zone to climax an 80-yard Owls scoring drive. But the joy didn't last as Texas rallied. Most of the night belonged to the enemy as Texas won and the Owls could only vow to try for revenge at Rice Stadium in 1974 against the Southwest Conference champion. The first Owl Day game came under sunny West Texas skies at Lubbock and the Owls met another fine team in Texas Tech. And here their all-league quarterback Joe Barnes gets to the Rice one in second quarter play but watch now a terrific goal line stand. Second and one, and a Red Raider blast stacked up by David Swapner for no gain. Another try to the outside now, but Preston Anderson and Mike Culpepper stack it up for a loss. 
and Texas Tech foregoes the field goal to try for touchdown on fourth. But Larry O'Neill stops Barnes, and the Fighting Owls joyfully hold for down. But the Red Raiders are tough and take the lead. Rice fights back late in the game as young Kramer hits Lofton for 12 on this pass inside the 10. And Kramer makes a fine scoring run from the five on the club to finish 10 and one and go to the Gator Bowl. But the Rice score can only narrow the gap as Texas Tech wins 19 to six. At this stage, the Owls were in a tough situation, frankly speaking. No team in the country had faced a tougher schedule. But it was one in six with four big league games to go. A team of less character might well have just gone through the motions. But Big Al Conover and his comeback clan were made of sterner stuff. They staged a miracle finish. And every single man, including the backup guys on the sideline, as you soon will see, played a big role in the dazzling rally. We can't meet them all up close, but let's take a quick review of some of the standout Owl players of 1973 before we go to the four finale game. Twenty-nine, Carl Swerf, voted by his teammates for the George Martin Award as most valuable player. Swift senior from Fall City made one of the biggest plays in all Rice grid history with his fantastic 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the final minutes of the Aggie game that helped turn the season around. 49, Bruce Henley, twice consensus All-Southwest Conference safety man from Westbury of Houston, twice winner of a Jess Neely Defense Award. Rice nominee for the Exxon Network Turn Tips Award. Cornelius Walker, number 76. A top candidate for All-America honors in 1974, if ever there was one. A man to watch in 1974. Number 40, Heston Anderson. Strong, quick, tough, senior monster man on defense from Bonham. Number 25, Eddie Lofton. Second in the conference in pass receiving as a sophomore. This talented lad from Brooklyn, New York, is solid all-conference material as a junior next fall. Great hands and moves and remarkably competitive. Number 17, Alan Pringle. Brilliant place kick specialist. He's an English citizen who went to the rugby school in England, the game from which America football evolved. Number 18, Mike Landrum. Made some old conference teams as a putter specialist. His sophomore from Tyler became the first ever league player to be named Associated Press Offensive Player of the Week for his kicking. 31, Dane Sykes, an unknown freshman from Little Cold Spring, north of Houston. This swift lad zoomed to start him in a hurry when he had 99 and 96 yard kickoff returns in early season that you've already seen. Number 19, John Peterson, representing the unsung heroes of football the fiery guys of the specialty teams who cover and receive kickoffs and punts. Number seven, Fred Geisler, the Floridian from Orlando. This man moved in a quarterback and especially won respect with his return from early season adversity to help the Owls as the man under in the late season victory drive. 53, Richard Holas, motivated senior linebacker from Schulenburg, who will make one of the really big plays of the year in the Arkansas game. Even with these men, we haven't touched close to all the Owl standouts of a memorable season. Such others as tough runner Gary Ferguson, Frosh quarterback Tommy Kramer, fullback John Coleman, solid senior offensive lineman Sammy Johnson, David Vandiver, Mike Goode, especially deserving acclaim. And such additional defenders as linebackers John Kelly and Rodney Norton, tackled Brian Davenport, ends Larry O'Neill and David Snellings and Brent Barnes, and defensive back Cully Culpepper, and the list goes on. But it's time to see the big plays of the big drive as Arkansas invaded Rice Stadium in November. Early on, Arkansas threatened, but defensive back Mike Culpepper of Odessa rescued the Owls with a spectacular interception and 58 yard return to give Rice a big boost. Big number 52, Jody Medford, moves ahead of him downfield. Soon after that play, Tommy Kramer hit Ed Lofton with this 12-yard pass to the Razorback 25 as the Owls made a strong early move. And a few plays later, Frosh Kramer takes it on in on this 15-yard scamper off his own audible call at the line of scrimmage. And Rice led favorite Arkansas 7-0 in the early going.
Terrific punting by Mike Landrum earned him Player of the Week honors out of this game, and here was one of his amazing boots that kept the Hogs pinned up all day after having to start inside their own 10-yard line. Good coverage, too. But this late game play was a spark to ignite the whole late season drive as you see the reaction after this pass came with Rice only 10 to 7 ahead. Richard Holas picks it off and away he goes for 29 yards and a touchdown. This clinches a 17 to 7 triumph and what a celebration as Big Al Conover and everybody gets in the act including Victory Cartwheels by Frost Reserve, Billy Neal. A big victory for Wright. Second in a row, plus a tie with respected Arkansas over the past three years. The halftime Rice band controversy made national headlines, but it was a sizzler game with Texas A&M also worthy of notice. And this early interception by Preston Anderson showed how excited the players were for this one. That grab by Anderson set up this early Rice touchdown on a fine pass from Geisler to Lofton to give the Owls a 7-0 lead before an enthused crowd at Rice Stadium on a sunny afternoon. Both teams hit fiercely on defense, and here the Owl defenders, led by Cornelius Walker, bat a loose ball from a and recovered for Rice by Larry O'Neill to set up a field goal. Charged up Rice increased this lead in the second period as Geisler hit Swerk for 34 yards on the drive into Aggie territory. And the score comes when Geisler, replacing the injured Kramer in this game, connects with his scoring pitch to Lofton for a 17 to nothing Rice lead. But disaster strikes Rice late in the game. An Aggie rally finds this touchdown with only 2.27 to play, giving A&M a 20-17 lead and time running out. Then it came, the amazing kickoff return as Carl Swert comes out of a mass of people, suddenly darts to daylight, and dashes 95 yards to a touchdown. A lost cause is turned into an emotional happening as the entire Rice squad Chases work clear up the ramp in delirious joy. Billy Neal does his cartwheels. Big Al goes into ecstasy. And as the Owls held off another late Aggie threat, the Rice grid boss hurries to a post-game coach's handshake after another Owl upset victory. Boiling skies soon will unleash heavy rain, thunder, and lightning on TCU's Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth as the Owls play the Horn Frogs. Conditions are weird as Bruce Henley recovers the fumble by Mike Luttrell in the splashy early going. Just as this play begins, a lightning bolt hits nearby and watch Geisler react to quarterback. On over, and then TCU coach Billy Tohill quickly confer with the referee. And in a rare move, a grid game is delayed for weather. The teams head to the house, as the saying goes, as we see where the lightning struck. But the teams soon return as the storm moves on. As we return to action, watch Cornelius Walker make one of his patented super defensive plays. He drops the Horn Frog passer for a 17-yard loss. Now we pick up a rice fumble recovery by alert Chris Fisher from Eufaula, Oklahoma. It's deep at the TCU 14 and a break for Rice. Two plays later, Geisler hits Ferguson on a short pass and wants Gary's great second effort to get in for the score to put Rice in front, 7 to nothing. But the play of the game, another of many such dazzlers by the Owls, was another long kickoff return. This one, again, by Carl Swert, just a week after his 95-yarder against the Aggies. This one is for 99 yards and what proves to be the winning points of a 14 to 9 Rice win. Perfect weather, 75 degrees and sunny, greeted the Owls' final home appearance at Rice Stadium. And we see Geisler pass 27 yards to squirt to the Baylor 9 in the finale with the Bears. 
And here it is, as the Dad's Day crowd, including Geisler's own father all the way from Florida, watched Fred slip in for the first goal. And a bit later, Geisler connects again with Fort. Wide open for this 45-yard touchdown play to put Rice ahead 14 to nothing. Late in the game with Rice well in control, the defense pops the ball loose on a big hit by David Snelling. Freshman John Stanfield recovers at the bare 26 to set up another late owl score. And this is it as Claude Reed, a promising rookie quarterback, hits Swerk in the end zone for the last owl touchdown of the year and final of his career for the Rice most valuable player. A good play to close our highlights on as Rice wins 27 to nothing in the finale game. And now the Owls look to the future, regretting the loss of the able seniors who served so well, but eager for the return of many good hands and anxious to sign top high school senior prospects to build the forces for another big season in 1974. The Rice Owls again plan to entertain the fans with a great and challenging schedule against the best in the nation. As Al Conover aptly puts it, you can't be the best unless you play and beat the best. And that is our goal for 1974 and on down the line as the Rice Owls plan to rise again. <laughs>